Robert Emmett was born on the 4th of March 1778 in Dublin, Ireland. He came from a good background as his father, Dr. Robert Emmett, was a core physician and his mother, Elizabeth Mason, also came from a wealthy family. Financially, the Emmets were well off, owning a home in the centre of Dublin as well as a country residence near Milltown. They were part of the Protestant Ascendancy, which was the name given to the Protestant upper class that dominated Ireland. As a child, Robert was possibly influenced by the views of his elder brother, Thomas, and his brother's friend, Theobald Wolftone. Both were Republican nationalists that wanted to see Ireland become an independent state. In his youth, Emmett attended Oswald School. Following this, he enrolled in Trinity College Dublin in October 1793, at the age of 15. After three years at university, he joined a debating society. While he was still at Trinity, his brother Thomas, along with a group of his friends, became heavily involved in political activism. It wasn't too long after that Robert joined his brother and decided to accept the role as secretary of part of a group called the Society for United Irishmen. The organisation aimed to achieve the emancipation of the Roman Catholics through parliamentary reform as well as the independence of Ireland. With tensions on the rise between the British and Irish nationalists, secret groups like this were stamped out and its members were usually charged with treason. By April of 1798, Robert's participation in the group was discovered and he was expelled from Trinity College. That same year, British forces started to arrest Irish nationalists in order to reduce the support for a united independent state and maintain their control over Ireland. In order to avoid being imprisoned, Emmett fled to France. After spending a while in France, he returned for the Rising of 1798, led by his brother's friend, Theobald Wolftone. The rebellion was well organised and galvanised the support of thousands of Irish rebels, as well as French forces. However, after a five-month struggle, the British forces were successful in defeating the rebels. The result was a death toll of around 20,000 and the Acts of Union of 1800. The Society for United Irishmen that was behind much of the coordination of the 1798 uprising was left in ruin. Most of the key members were either dead, locked away or in another country. So, it was left to Emmett to reorganise the group. For almost a year, he stayed in Ireland trying to strengthen the nationalist cause, but his actions no matter how secretive, didn't go unnoticed. In April 1799, a warrant was issued for his arrest. He escaped and again returned to France. Emmett attempted to reignite hopes of another rising in Ireland, backed by the French, but his attempts of securing military aid were unsuccessful. For the time being, the French were focused on maintaining peace with the British. Eventually, Franco-British relations worsened, and finally, support for Emmett's insurrection was granted. With high hopes, Emmett returned to Ireland in October 1802. His dreams of an independent Ireland were still very much alive. Despite the Acts of Union of 1800, which united the Kingdom of Great Britain and the Kingdom of Ireland to create the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, this meant that Ireland was now, more than ever, under the control of Great Britain. Their parliament was left without effect. They were now ruled directly from Westminster, and the Irish were treated as secondary citizens. Because of this, in March 1803, Emmett, along with Thomas Russell and James Hope, began to lay the groundwork for another uprising. With the plan in place, they set about manufacturing weapons and explosives all around Dublin. They even created a special foldable pike that could fit under one's coat. The difference between this rebellion and Wolftone's is that Emmett had the element of surprise on his side. However, this was greatly affected when an explosion killed a man 
at one of Emmett's arms depots. This was a huge blow to Emmett's strategy. He was now forced to advance the date of the rising before the authorities expected anything. However, this would mean that he might not have all the arms and support that he needed. Many rebels turned away from Emmett's plea for help, mainly due to the lack of firearms that had been promised. Despite the lower numbers, the plan was put into action on the 23rd of July, 1803. The aim was to take Dublin Castle and later gain the support of the whole country. To try and bring more people to Emmett's cause, about 10,000 copies of a proclamation in the name of the provincial government were printed and handed out. Later, the British authorities destroyed most of the copies. The rebel group, which was 200 men strong, failed to seize a lightly defended Dublin castle. Following this, chaos broke out in the surrounding areas. By now, the group grew and many random people, not under the control of Emmett, joined the huge disturbance that was going on. The scenes that Emmett saw repulsed him. One man was pulled off his horse and stabbed to death by a pike. Seeing as this was not his intention, Emmett called off the rebellion and escaped into the Wicklow Mountains. However, the anarchy continued. One unfortunate man was Lord Chief Justice of Ireland, Lord Kilwarden. Along with his nephew, they were dragged from a carriage and spiked to death. The clashes between rebels and British soldiers continued on late into the night, until finally, the military forces squashed the Irish rebels. As a result of the rising, around 50 Irishmen and 20 British soldiers died. While in the Wicklow Mountains, Emmett made the conscious decision to stay in Ireland. Instead of making a quick escape to France, which he easily could have done, he decided to go to Harold's Cross so he could be with his fiancée, Sarah Curran. He believed that maybe within Ireland he could stay hidden while remaining by the side of the woman he loved. But this wasn't to be. On the 25th of August, just a month after the rising, he was captured and taken to Kilmainham Jail. His trial took place on the 19th of September. The prosecutors had many deficiencies in their case against Emmett, but they used corruption to get around this problem. Leonard McNally, the barrister that represented Emmett in court, accepted £200 and a pension in order to throw the case. Fortunately, McNally's assistant, Peter Burroughs, was a more honourable man and declined a similar offer and tried to defend Emmett the best he could. Nevertheless, Emmett was found guilty of high treason. Just before he was sentenced, Emmett delivered a speech. To date, it's speculated that there's over 70 versions of this speech. Emmett said, I am here ready to die. I am not allowed to vindicate my character. No man shall dare to vindicate my character. And when I am prevented from vindicating myself, let no man dare to calumniate me. Let my character and my motives repose in obscurity and peace. To other times and other men can do them justice. Then shall my character be vindicated. Then may my epitaph be written. With Emmett having been found guilty, the Chief Justice, Lord Norbury, sentenced him to death. The custom for high treason was to be hanged, drawn and quartered. But as Emmett belonged to the ascendancy, he wasn't disemboweled. Emmett had hoped that the Irish Patriots would try and save him, but all attempts were ineffective. The following day, on the 20th of September, Emmett was executed in Thomas Street, Dublin. Many of Emmett's friends and family had been arrested under suspicion of treason. Because of this, no one dared to claim his remains. Emmett's remains ended up in Kilmainham Jail. The jailer was given orders to bury them in a nearby hospital grounds if no one claimed them. A search of said burial ground was done and no remains were found. The resting place of Emmett's corpse remains a mystery. However, the most accepted theory is that his remains were moved to St. Peter's Church in 1804 during the burial of Emmett's sister, 
Mary Ann Holmes. Shortly after Robert Emmett's execution, his older brother Thomas emigrated to the United States. He had a lucrative career as a lawyer, and he eventually served as the New York State Attorney General. Emmett has been remembered throughout Irish history as a hero and a great Irish patriot. His speech has been widely quoted and is very well remembered among Irish nationalists. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Robert Emmett. I really hope you enjoyed and sorry for not uploading last week. It's because I had the flu and I couldn't really talk. I couldn't speak very well. Anyway, that's all from me. I will see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.